Macbeth is a masterclass in visual style and literal storytelling. Adam Arkapa, cinematographer behind True Detective Season 1 and recently Netflix's The King, delivers his finest work in feature film. Arkapa manages to combine brutal visuals and compelling imagery to create a modern Shakespeare interpretation. Macbeth is a classic tale of despair, envy, and greed for power. A Scottish general receives a prophecy from a trio of witches that one day he will become King of Scotland. He's consumed by ambition and spurred to action by his wife, Lady Macbeth. So Macbeth then murders King Duncan, his superior, to take the throne. Racked with guilt and paranoia, he goes on to kill Banquo, and he even kills Macduff's family, as Banquo haunts him repeatedly. The tale ends violently with Macbeth being killed by Macduff. The story serves as a prelude to the sins of men and war itself. Killing Macbeth doesn't feel like an end to these sins, but other than a rebirth for another conqueror. Closer examination at the words or sentences in the book or film can lead to many different interpretations. To some, the text is far too dense, while others revere it. I suggest watching the film with subtitles to get the most out of it. The real triumph of Macbeth is its imagery by Adam Arkapa. It's a true concussive blast of brutality and painterly storytelling. Arkapa utilizes many methods and insights to achieve its singular look. According to a ASC Q&A article from 2015, Arkapa explains in great detail his process on creating the look of Macbeth. He and Krizel set out to create the visual style inspired by Macbeth's war-torn psyche in the story. Arkapas states, When I was 23, I did a documentary in the Middle East and met some guys in Israel who had been in the army and were discharged because they suffered from PTSD. I asked them to describe it. They told me as if every moment lasts an eternity, everything is in slow motion, that it's almost like a banality, a stillness that you can't escape, which is terrible. That's what we explored as Macbeth crashes into his madness. End quote. Arkapa and Krizel even brought the PTSD approach to their editing storytelling. Arkapa goes on to say, once you're inside someone's head, there really are no boundaries to what you can do. So one liberty we decided we would take was to not be restricted to matching every shot in a sequence. By utilizing this technique, the imagery could be altered shot to shot and be in line with the psyche of Macbeth. As for the tools, Arkapa opted for a digital anamorphic kit. It can be common practice to shoot anamorphic wide open to get the most out of the aberrations and characteristics. But with anamorphic glass, they can cost upwards of two to three times the price of a spherical set. However, with anamorphic, you get a de-squeeze, true widescreen image with slight vignetting. Plus, you get the shallow depth of field of wide open with the view of a wider focal length. This look greatly amplified some of the grand sequences in the film. He preferred the slighter aberrations and the greater depth of field in a 2.8 to 4 T-stop. Other than a wide open, let's say a 1.2 or 1.8. This gives a very nice soft focus to the backgrounds of the characters, where there are plenty of textures behind them. The set design and art department really went out of their way on this picture. So shooting around a T4 is a very good choice to balance the mise-en-scene. It should be noted a lot of times a wide open view is more of an amateur crutch to bring a cinematic look to something that shouldn't be so isolated. You'll notice DPs tend to shoot conversations between a 2.8 to 5.6 and not a wide open T-stop. There's one aspect of Macbeth's photography everyone can't stop gushing about and that is the slow motion sequences. The team used a Phantom Flex camera and zoom lenses to achieve this look. He states it was actually a necessity based on the time constraints shooting such complex battle sequences. Shooting with constraints is a huge part of a filmmaker's job on set. Hence why Arkapa references T.S. Eliot in the article. When forced to work within a strict framework, the imagination is taxed to its utmost and will produce its richest ideas." End quote. He was first given 10 days to shoot the opening sequences, and then 6, which then became 3 days to shoot. This is the nature of film production. Problems arise during production, and they are given a specific time frame to be solved. 
But if you lay the right groundwork and understand your story deeply, moment to moment inspiration can arise on set. Ultimately, art is made of constraints. Arkapa admits to being inspired by the greats such as Caravaggio and Rembrandt. Great works from Rembrandt and Caravaggio exhibit the technique known as chiaroscuro. Chiaroscuro lighting in art is the use of strong contrast between light and dark, usually bold contrast affecting a whole composition. It is also a technical term used by artists and art historians for the use of contrast of light to achieve a sense of volume in modeling three-dimensional objects and figures. The use of strong contrasts, the stark difference between light and shadow, in cinematography, this can be measured quite easily with film lighting ratios, the ratio between the key and the fill of the subject. However, most DPs now opt for false color or waveforms to figure this out. I also do the same. Chiaroscuro technique ideally needs a single light source as the key light. And if you are lighting a specific period, then your decisions are made even easier. Macbeth takes place during the 11th century Scotland. Light sources of the 11th century were just the sun, moon, and fire. That's it. Therefore, they used these three sources across the film. Fire was primarily used in candlelight or torches, so each scene or location required a single tone of color for the flames, and possibly multiple sources of flame to light the actors. Replicating the look of these sources can be done practically or using a variety of modern fixtures such as tungsten and LEDs. Fire tends to be soft but harsh. They must have used bounce or diffusion throughout the film to get this characteristic on the light. I assume for moonlight sequences they used HMIs, which emit the closest we have to man-made daylight temp, plus their light output is unchallenged in the industry. There are few records of the day filming, but by closely examining the day exteriors, you see they definitely use the sun as a key during ideal times of the day, since a large majority of the film was shot on location. There is a common misconception in photography and film that exposure is a finite number or level to hit. A film like Macbeth is the perfect foil to this common thought. Underexposure and overexposure are actually tools in the arsenal. And a perfect exposure doesn't really exist, but only the chosen exposure exists. Macbeth is a masterclass in modern visual style married to a timeless story. Some would argue this style is flashy and loud, but I would propose otherwise. Arkapod and the team used the tools at hand in a minimal but a very effective approach. The end result could have been achieved many other ways, but with the budget and time, Arkapod and Krizel deliver the world of Macbeth with precision. Style is really not a bad term. It can be directly related to your point of view as a storyteller. You'll see plenty of Macbeth and Arkapa's other work. His combination of stark imagery and story is clear that style can be substance under the right hands. Let me know if you found this video helpful and if you are interested in more cinematography videos. These could range between specific or broad. Thanks for watching.